Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are continuing with our definitions of acids and bases. So this is acid and base definitions, part two. So we're going to start today with the second definition. Um, the last time we, we talked about the first definition, which is the most narrow, the Arrhenius definition. And today we're going to talk about the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. And so according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid, an acid is any substance that can donate an, uh, an H plus ion or a proton to another substance. And a Bronsted-Lowry base is any substance that can accept the H plus ion or a proton from another substance. So this uh, definition, the Bronsted-Lowry, is normally referred to as the proton donor, proton acceptor model of acids and bases. So um, since we're talking about donating H pluses, we have to take a little break here and discuss what a polyprotic acid, protic meaning proton. So anything that has more than one proton would be considered a polyprotic acid. So any acid that contains more than one acidic hydrogen. Examples would be phosphoric acid, which is uh, H3PO4, so it has uh, three acidic hydrogens. Carbonic acid has two acidic hydrogens. Sulfuric has two acidic hydrogens. So those would be examples. So with polyprotic acids, um, they do not lose all of the hydrogens in one shot. They come off in water to the same extent, um, and they do it basically one at a time. And I'm sorry I keep saying basic because we're talking about acids. But anyway, uh, polyprotic acids generally lose all of their hydrogens in water to the same extent. So example, sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, um, has complete ionization because it's a strong acid. And so it loses the uh, protons one at a time. So the first one comes off um, when it encounters water and you get the hydronium ion, the H3O plus, the protonated water, and HSO4 minus. That's the first one comes off. And then once that one forms, it can be an acid as well. It's a little bit weaker than sulfuric on its own and it also comes off, and so that HSO4- minus encounters water, the water gets protonated, and you're left with SO4-2. minus two. So if you're thinking about this in terms of molarity, um, let's remember that if you have one molar sulfuric acid, it's producing two moles of H plus ions. So then we have to talk a little bit about conjugate acid-base pairs. So when we're talking about this Bronsted-Lowry definition, so the um, H plus or proton donor is the acid and the proton acceptor is the base. So again, we talk about the acid when it loses its H plus, has a conjugate base, and the base accepts the proton and has a conjugate acid. So we talk about these acid-base pairs. So let's talk a little bit more about these acid-base reactions and give you the definitions. A conjugate acid is the product that the forms as a result of gaining the proton. And the conjugate base is the product that forms as a result of losing the proton. So example here. So here we have hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride gas going into water. So we have hydrochloric acid for all intents and purposes. What's happening is hydrochloric acid is acting as the proton donor. And so the conjugate acid is what happened as a result of gaining that proton. And then the water here is acting as the base. And so it's accepting that proton. And the thing that forms as a result of losing that proton is the conjugate base. So here, the acid donated the proton, forming the conjugate acid. What was left behind when the 
acid lost its proton is its conjugate base. So HCl and Cl- minus are an acid and conjugate base, base pair, and water accepting the proton is acting as a base and conjugate acid pair. So conjugate acid base pairs always differ by one proton. So the conjugate acid has one more proton than the base, and again, has one more H atom in its formula, increases in charge by plus one because you're adding an H plus to it. The conjugate base has one less proton, again, has one less H atom in its formula, so the charge has decreased by one. And so I think now what we should talk a little bit about is the fact that we're showing water acting as both an acid and a base. And so that is the definition of an amphoteric substance. Amphoteric substances are substances that can act either as an acid or a base. So in terms of a baseball analogy, they're kind of switch hitters. So examples are water, which is the most common example. Um, it can donate uh, a proton to act as an acid, and it can accept an H plus to form the hydronium ion. So it'll act as a base then. So here is showing water acting as an acid. So here is ammonia, and here is a water, and what ends up happening is that uh, the um, water donates the proton, leaving behind the hydroxide ion, and you get the ammonium ion here. Um, and here, amphoteric water acting as a base. So here, if it encounters an acid, some generic HA acid, water now is going to accept the proton and form the hydronium ion and leaving the base anion. Some other examples of amphoteric substances are bicarbonate. Um, you might recall that when we do labs where there's acid present, I always keep sodium bicarbonate around because it can neutralize acids and bases. It's found in sodium bicarb, and again, it can be used to neutralize acids or bases. Uh, when mixed with a basic solution, it acts as an acid. So here, if I uh, attach it or if it encounters hydroxide ion, it releases the carbonate ion and forms water. So again, it is able to neutralize it. And again, this would be the acid and its conjugate base. And then if it's mixed in an acidic solution, it will act as a base. So here is my bicarbonate ion with acid, and I will get carbonic acid in water. And recall, carbonic acid doesn't hang out it immediately decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. And again, here, acting as a base, and there's the conjugate acid. So uh, a long time ago, when we did double replacement reactions, we talked about the reaction of a strong acid with a strong base. We called it a neutralization. We say that strong acids completely dissociate to form the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. So, um, sorry, strong acids completely dissociate to form the hydronium ion, and strong bases form the hydroxide ion. So here in the reaction of hydrochloric acid, strong acid with sodium hydroxide, strong base, you get sodium chloride and um, water. So the net ionic equation for acid plus base is H plus and OH minus meeting to form water. So this neutralization reaction is where um, the hydronium ions and the hydroxide ions form water molecules and a salt, so acid plus base yields salt plus water. The salt is the ionic compound that is composed of a cation from a base and the anion H plus, uh, plus, H plus from the acid. Acid plus base yields salt plus water. So the next definition that we talk about is the broadest definition. So we went from the Arrhenius definition, um, H plus is released, acid definition, to the Bronsted-Lowry, and finally 
the broadest definition is the Lewis acid base definition. So Lewis, you'll recall, was uh, the guy that came up with the Lewis dot diagrams. So a Lewis acid is an atom, ion, or molecule that accepts an electron pair to form a covalent bond. So the Lewis definition of an acid is something that is an electron pair acceptor. And notice that this is an atom, ion, or molecule. So this includes as acids any substances that do not contain hydrogen at all, but still behave as acids. So here an example would be um, boron trifluoride plus the fluoride ion to form boron tetrafluoride ion. And a Lewis base would be an atom, ion, or molecule that is an electron pair donor. So here the electron pair acceptor is the boron trifluoride and the electron pair donor is the fluoride ion. So again the Lewis acid base definition is the broadest definition because we're just talking about um, substances that can accept or donate an electron pair. So a summary of the definitions of acids and bases would look like this. Our three definition, definitions are Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis. So the Arrhenius definition defines an acid as anything that releases H plus in aqueous solution, and a base is anything that releases hydroxide ion in solution. The Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is a proton donor, and a base is a proton acceptor. And uh, the Lewis definition is an acid is an electron pair acceptor, which means it could be a positive ion. And a base is an electron pair donor, which means it could be an anion or a negative ion. So for today, this is Miss Augustine signing off.